YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon now if you want to become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids and if you don't want to that's fine as well this episode features the patrons, once again, shout out to your special shout out to all of y'all. This was actually a, a continuation of the previous episode of questions from subscribers that we dropped. But I had not realized while I was recording that uh, there was a certain question that came up about if Lamar Jackson can be a championship caliber quarterback under John Harbaugh and G. Rowe. And then we just started going on a tangent for a long time. And I did not realize how long we were talking for. So I was like, man. I can't make this that episode an hour long because we, we were going on, on that one question alone. Then we had a bunch of other questions. But these are all the other questions that we had. So I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got a lot of questions. It seems like it seems like I, I'm, re I'm recording this on Wednesday, February 9th uh, at 1150 a.m. It seems like stuff may finally be quieting down for the Ravens just a tad bit. So we'll see. But we got a lot of questions to get caught up on. So many of y'all have sent emails. We got them all. Uh, we got a lot to catch up on. So this may be the week that we can finally do that. Uh, but we'll see because you, you never know what the Ravens. Anyway, I've been talking too much right now. Let's get into the rest of these questions. I love y'all. Next question came from my boy Irv. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your Ohana family are staying healthy and happy. This is going to be my first ever question from subscribers. I'm a little nervous, but here goes. I ain't got nothing to be nervous for. He said, why isn't Lamar Jackson being placed under center more? Ooh. <laughs> hey, that's, that's locked up in the vault, man. Those under center plays are locked up in the vault. Man, if they... See, it's, it's, it's simple stuff when it comes to the Ravens. It's, it's simple stuff where it's like, man, they, why don't they do... But with Lamar Jackson, him being placed under center, that would open up your playbook that much more. Not in pistol, not in shotgun, but be, having plays for him under center would open up the playbook so much more. So much more. I, anyway, let's get back to the question. He said, I swear, Giro has said he plans to have LJ8 under center more this past season, but I still saw Lamar in the pistol or shotgun majority of the time. See, this is why I, before I start running my mouth, I should read the whole question because we say the same thing. But yeah, it's true. It's true. Giro said it. Oh, yeah, we, we're going to have a lot more plays for Lamar Jackson under center. That was a lie. It didn't happen. But anyway, let's keep going. Um, he said, I know that for a dual threat quarterback like Lamar, the pistol shotgun allows for the read option offense to be used better so he can run around and make something happen if the play breaks down. Yes, especially that the, the, the read option, the RPO and all that stuff. But then what makes this even worse is the fact that they cut down that RPO like crazy this year. They pretty much cut it out. Reason being because they didn't have their regular running backs who they would run the RPO with. So the chemistry would be off. So they just like took it out a lot. So that would make even more sense to have some more plays under center. But <laughs> anyway, he said, however, I feel like taking snaps right under center can help develop Lamar's ability to read defenses pre-snap. It can also help develop his confidence staying in the pocket as opposed to running around and holding on to the ball, waiting for something to happen or something to open up. What do y'all think, team? Keep it clean. Thanks, e. Graven. Keep continuing with the awesome content. Look forward to the rest of this offseason with you and the rest of the team. Keep it clean. Hey, appreciate that, Herb. Thank you, man. Um, mm, yeah, it, it's just it's the simple things again. Simple things. And you know what, 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 made, what made it even worse? Is the fact that G Row before the season, like it would be one thing if this was just a conversation that we had amongst ourselves as fans of the game, um, fans of the team or whatnot. It would be one thing we were like, well, man, why isn't Lamar Jackson under center more? And it was a question that we had uh, uh, last year. But okay, cool. Scratch that. So this year, what makes it worse is the fact that the actual offensive coordinator came out and said it. Came out and said it. We're gonna, we, we got a lot of plays for Lamar Jackson to run under center. We're going to be having him play under center a lot more this year. And they didn't do it. They didn't do it. 
I, I would I would love a reasonable explanation as to why not. Why didn't that happen? Why didn't that go down? Why? 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 So I, it's, it's just it's, it's confusing and it just it doesn't make any sense to me. The next question came from my boy Nick Brick. He said, Engraven, hope you're doing well. I try and keep this quick. I don't know about that one. He said, the most glaring issue for the Ravens offense is offensive line, and people think we're going to go O-line in the first round. However, if we re-sign Bradley Bozeman, where is the need? Uh, I would say Ronnie Stanley, left tackle and right tackle. Set the tackles. Because Ronnie Stanley, you, you can't trust him. You can't trust him. You cannot put all your eggs into Ronnie Stanley's basket. You can't do it. And with Jawan James, you, you got Jawan James at right tackle. You got Pat McCary at right, right tackle. You got Tyree Phillips, maybe we'll see. But you got those two right tackles. Now, Pat McCary, you, could, you can do all right with him there. And he did a lot better than expected. But you could still do better. But as far as Jawan James, you can't put all your eggs in that basket either. You, you can hope that, hey, it turns out great. But better to, for you to be overprepared than underprepared. Better for you to be like, all right, well, we, we hope this guy works out. We hope he comes back and he's healthy and he plays again. He hasn't played since 2019, but okay, cool. We hope that he comes back and he does his thing. You can hope that, but what, what's reality going to be? It's better to be like, all right, we hope that Jawan James can come in and do his thing. And then, oh, but if he can't do it. We drafted this guy in the first round that was an excellent right tackle in college. Oh, okay. So if Jawan James doesn't come back, all right, cool. If he, Jawan James doesn't work out, all right, cool. If Jawan James doesn't look good, all right, cool. No problem. We're already prepared for that. So that's where I would say the need is at tackles. Uh, but he said, if, oh, he said, I get Jawan James and Stanley both haven't played in a while, but we're already paying them and they're going to get the chance to start regardless. Well, Ronnie Stanley, he will. But see, again, the chance to start. Ronnie Stanley is a starter, for sure. He is the starter. He's Ravens starting left tackle. But do you really want to be like, all right, this guy who, he got, he got his injury problems. They did pay him a lot of money, a whole lot of money. Do you want to be like, all right, with this guy, he got his injury problems. We paid him a whole lot of money. Um, but he does got the injury problem. He just came off of ankle surgery. His ankle's been bothering him for years. Hopefully, it's all the way cleaned up. Hopefully, it's good to go. But do you really want to rely on that? Now, money-wise, you almost feel like you have to, but at the same time, it's like you, you don't want to rely on that completely, man. You can't. You can't. But anyway, um, he said, yeah, uh, Juwan James and Stanley, they both haven't played in a while, but we're already paying them, and they're going to get the chance to start regardless. Plus, the new deal that McCary got will be our safety valve if either of those guys go down or don't live up. Like, yeah, McCary is sort of that uh, the swing man. He's a guy that can play all five spots on the offensive line. Um, but I, I would think that, the, in my opinion, the Ravens need to get somebody that specializes in one particular spot. Specializes at right tackle. Specializes at left tackle. That they're really good at that one spot. Not necessarily a guy that's okay at all five spots. And this is not even talking about McCary. But this is just talking about their offensive line, period. Get guys that, okay, that guy is a center. That guy is a right guard. That guy is a tackle. Stuff like that. Not just, guy, oh, that guy can play this, 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 this. No. Anyway, he said, uh, Zeitler played well, and I feel like they are going to see what they have in Ben Cleveland. I agree. I get drafting for the future, but not with the 14th overall pick with so many good players on the board. My question is, besides re-signing Bozeman, although I like Castillo, me too. Uh, what do you think addressing the offensive line means? Personally, I think we might already have what we need. However, we still don't have a middle linebacker, a top 10 receiver, an elite pass rush, a ball hawk safety, and who knows if J.K., Gus, or Peters will be ready next season. Yeah, good points. Um, well, we do have a middle linebacker. We have a couple of them. Uh, that would be Patrick Queen, uh, Malik Harrison, kind of, even though it seems like they're going to push him outside linebacker. Um, they have Chris Board. They have Christian Welch. Uh, but, yeah, Patrick Queen, definitely um, some improvements that need to be made there. Um, and really with all of them. A top 10 receiver. Well, Hollywood started off hot, but, of course, when Lamar went out, everything went down. Uh, he got to clean up them drops as well. But, anyway, um, I think I actually do think that re receiver, that could be like a sneaky first-round draft pick for the Ravens. And I know a lot of people would be like, whoa, uh, huh? 
I think that could be a sneaky first round draft pick for the Ravens. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we do uh, need a lot of these things that you mentioned. But yeah, like I said, with the offensive line, that's that's why. Well, that's my why. Why they would they need tackles? Because you just you can't trust them. You, you can't you can't trust them. But all these other things in elite pass rush. As far as the elite pass rush part, I think that starts with scheme more than anything. In my opinion, I think it starts with scheme more than anything. We got some guys that can rush the passer, but they got to be able to get into a rhythm. They they got to actually be pass rushers in order to rush the passer. And as as simple as that sound, it it obviously wasn't that simple. It wasn't e- easy enough. So if, I think if guys are given the opportunity to rush the passer, then maybe they will be able to, to become better pass rushers. Um, the ball hog safety, yes. I, oh, that would be lovely. Uh, but this this is we got to remember too. The 14th pick is the 14th pick, and yeah, that is a high pick, and um, you're going to have a, a, a plethora of players to choose from. But it's not, the draft is not only in round one. It's not. It's not only in round one. And whatever Ravens do, no matter what the Ravens do at the 14th pick, it's still going to be a lot of other players that need to get picked. There's still going to be a lot of other positions that need to be filled. We know in free agency, they try to like to fill it. They tr- like to try to fill as many positions as possible. With free agency, but with the draft, um, and they, they that's why they hope that they can do that, and then the draft can be best player available. Um, but it, it's not all about round one, it's, it's about the entire draft. And hopefully, they do go quality over quantity in this draft. I, I hope so. Hopefully, they're not just, oh, let's trade back and get a bunch of picks. No, how about trade up, trade up more quality. Over quantity. Go for the better players, not just more players. Next question came from my boy Olu. He sent me a video. NFL's unstoppable moments of the 2021 season. And he said, look how many times our defense is on this video with the missed tackles, the arm tackles, shaking my head. Now our offense is on here three times with tough plays, but our defense is on here giving up big plays, shaking my head. And, yes, that was a big story of the Ravens 2021 season with the defense, missed tackles that led to big plays, and sometimes no tackles that led to big plays, and sometimes guys just running wide open. And it happened a lot. Now, again, Marcus Peters, he was definitely missed big time. We know he was missed big time, but this year is like, oh, man, like, wow, he is huge for this Ravens defense. Huge. Um, And just – like you, you, you got to have a good mix of veteran experience. Oh, not not even veteran experience, but you got to have a good mix of smarts and ability. Um, and Ravens, as far as a, that that rangy type of safety that can really uh, cover the field, they didn't really have that. They had two strong safeties. They got they got two box safeties, but as far as the range, that's they didn't really have that this year. Um, so let's. I wonder how they're gonna attack free agency when it comes to that and the draft. Um, I know everybody, Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, but. If he is like that, like a lot of people say that he is, I, I got to watch tape on him. I haven't watched anything on anybody yet. But if he is really like that, like people say he is, ain't no way he lasts in the 14. There, there's no way he's lasting the 14. Well, anything's possible till it ain't possible no more, but he ain't lasting the 14. If he's like that. Um, so, but yeah, man, Ravens got to clean up the tackling for sure. Um, tackling even got people hurt. Like Anthony Averett threw his body into C.J. Uzama. I, initially, when I watched it live, I thought he threw his shoulder into him, but he threw his body into him. That's no way to tackle somebody, and that's how it got hurt. Because CJ Uzama was running full speed, and his knee or his like shin went directly into Anthony Avery's back. Then boom, out for the rest of the year, out for the rest of the year, and that was it. So it, they, they got the the technique has to be better that they're taught. Um, tackling has to be better and, and the scheme has to be better as well Because I think a lot of guys being wide open too Is a lot of guys on Ravens defense being just confused Next question came from my boy Justin And uh, he said hey what's up in Raven Hope all is well with you and the fam This is a quick show but I'm sure you've heard about The Brian Flores situation and lawsuit And I truly believe he has a case Now we don't know what will come of it Or if it will even have the impacts he hopes for But hypothetically If this causes more teams to accept black head co- Excuse me, black head coaches, what kind of change do you see around the league in the NFL period? And lastly, with the Ravens. I know we have only had three head coaches and two of them won Super Bowls. Ravens don't seem the type to shun black coaches, but uh, do you oh, but do you think that 
could be a next approach for us if so just want to hear your thoughts and like brian let's do say like brian flores is in miami i'm out um i think with brian flores with his whole lawsuit i think it did put a lot of pressure on the NFL, put some pressure on some different teams because I don't think it's a coincidence that after Brian Flores, his lawsuit, the Houston Texans, who everybody and their moms knew that they wanted to hire Josh McCown as their next head coach. They even wanted to hire him last year, but everybody knew that they wanted to hire him as a head coach. But then the whole Brian Flores thing happens and they like, oh, boom, uh, Lovey Smith, let's hire the defensive coordinator. Then the Dolphins, they're like, oh, let's hire Mike McDonald. And, and it, it's also changed a lot of the uh, the language with the NFL as well. Because I remember when Mike McDonald, I mean, Mike McDaniel, not McDonald. McDonald is Ravens defensive coordinator. I keep getting them two names mixed up. They're like right next to each other. Mike McDaniel and Mike McDonald. Um, but when Mike McDaniel got hired, I remember Adam Schefter tweeting, oh, the Dolphins have hired uh, Mike McDaniel to be their next head coach. He is, uh, he's black and white, something like that. Huh? Like, no, since when? When did when did that ever like? When did they have to say that? When did they say that about anybody before? Oh, he he's black and white, <laughs> like. And then um, it was somebody else too. Oh, the the Giants they they ended up hiring an assistant GM. I forgot what his name was. Um, but I, I basically I think it, it put Brian Flores. It it put a lot of pressure on teams, and it really changed uh some teams' approach. Now, a lot of spots have been filled up already, and still some more spots have to be filled up. But I think he did put pressure on the league. Now, as far as the Ravens, uh, Ravens have they've, – they've been doing this. Um, I mean, you see they brought in T. Martin, Keith Williams. They had Jim Caldwell here before. They had uh, Marvin Lewis. Um, who else? They, they hired – I mean, now they just brought back um, the linebacker, Zachary Orr. Uh, Anthony Levine, he just made the switch from playing and then retired. Now he's a scout. Um, who Ozzy Newsom? <laughs> what am I talking? Ozzy Newsom. Um, so yeah, Ravens. They 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 bring they've been bringing uh, I was about to say brothers, but they've been bringing minorities on uh for a minute now. As far as a head coach, oh that would be something, uh, and that would obviously be very different. And they yeah they have only had three coaches, so. They've had a lot of consistency at coaching. What, Marcia Broder, then Billick, then Harbaugh, and that's it. Um, so that that would be something. But I think as far as Raven Miners head coach, they, they've they been doing uh, a pretty good job when it comes to having minorities on and putting them on. Next question came from JP. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just wanted to say great work again uh, covering the Ravens in this roller coaster of a season <laughs> that we bore witness to this year. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, but yeah, it, it was a roller coaster for sure. And I, I don't like roller coasters. I, I, mm, I do not like roller. Last roller coaster I rode was back in two, maybe nineteen ninety eight, something like that. It was a long time ago. It was a Scooby Doo roller coaster at I think it was Six Flags. Was it Six Flags? I forgot where it was at. But anyway. Never got on a roller coaster again. Yeah, so he said, I was just curious if you are planning to do a video to discuss the topic of Sashi Brown taking over for Dick Cass as team president uh, of the Ravens and give your opinion on the news regarding to that move. Continue to keep up the great work. I oh, appreciate that. Well, here we are. <laughs> it ended up being a question from a subscriber. Um, but yeah, with Sashi Brown as the new president, initially I was thinking, oh, oh. I, I didn't know what to think because I had just, that day that he was hired, I was taking a nap. I was taking a nap, and then I woke up, and then I saw these notifications. Oh, Sashi Brown, Sashi Brown, Sashi Brown, the new president of the Ravens. And I'm like, I ain't even know that the past president was retiring. Um, it's like it, it came out of nowhere, but I'm sure for the Ravens, the people in the front office, they probably knew it was on the way. But with Sashi Brown, and they said he's going to start taking over in April, so right before the draft. But initially, I was thinking, man, how, how did he do when he was with the Browns? How, how was that? Um, oh, but back to the previous question. That's another brother that the, the Ravens hired. Uh, but with the uh, with Sashi Brown, they as a president, I didn't know exactly what the president did. But they did say they, they cleared it up. They said the president, they take care of sort of business, the business side with the Ravens, not the football side, the, the, the business side, t ticket prices. 
They take care of um, the concessions, the uh, stuff that happens at the stadium, stuff like that, the, all the business side. So as far as the football side, uh, I don't think he's going to have anything to do with that. Um, so I'm like, OK, cool. Um, he's a younger guy. Uh, we know he he loves him analytics, too, so he'll fit right in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to really have any bearing on the Ravens when it comes to the, the team on the football field. Because, yeah, he, he don't have he's not going to have anything to do with that. Because what's the name of uh, the past president? Cass, he ain't had nothing to do with that either. So that's that. The last question on this episode came from my boy Raven Pride. He said, what's up, brother? Hope you and the family are doing well. First of all, I'd like to thank you for being a lot of support during the time I was in the hospital. And, of course, team, keep it clean. Uh, you're a great person and well-deserving all the credit for taking the time to keep myself and others up to date with all Ravens news. Just wanted to share that with you, my brother. Hey, um, no, I don't deserve no credit. I don't need no credit. That's all y'all, man. I, I appreciate y'all. Um, only thing we do, get on here, talk, share our opinion on whatever it is going on. That's that. That's that. We, we, we don't do anything special. Um, but the, the fact that so many of y'all support I, I appreciate it because y'all don't have to support. Um, that's something that you choose to do. So that, that makes me appreciate it even more. Um, you go out of your way to watch the videos. Go out of your way to comment on the videos. Go out of your way to subscribe. Go out of your way to, to be patrons. And this was an episode that just featured all patrons. Um, so I appreciate y'all. Thank you for that. But So I don't do anything special. It's literally all y'all. <laughs> we don't do nothing on here But just get on here and talk for a couple minutes Well, a lot of couple minutes um, But I appreciate y'all I, I thank y'all and y'all just Y'all keep being special uh, to each other You see my boy, he like gotta made it Gotta made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it Right and grave it Shout out to Graven.